Vapos, right. uh, it's your turn. Vapos is using Step of the Wind again. Okay. And is going to, um, and is just going to kind of give the nod to Shadir, like he, he noticed that uh, Shadir helped Maver out. Mm -hmm. uh, but he doesn't feel like he can stick around to wait for a small movement buff. So uh, he is going to move... Basically, uh, he's going to be running all the way along... Uh, or all the way to the edge and jumping or in jumping down and basically he's wanting his movement path to look something like that looks good um, um he's pretty good at avoiding falling damage he is and then from there he's going to launch three uh unarmed attacks against this demon oh he doesn't even have to dash to do that dashing or when he does step of the wind dashing is a bonus action all right, there you go. So, all right. Um, You're attacking this one who's undamaged. And damaged. I am, yes. Okay. And I would like to change that fact as quickly as possible. Um, from where I'm at, am I, or am I flanking with Bref? Uh, yeah, because it's a large creature and you have reach. Okay, awesome. Uh, then, yeah, I'm going to use my key straps again. So that's a 29 to hit for a total of 25 damage. Wow. Nice. Okay, let's add a second shriek of pain. Second attack is a 19 to hit for 21 force damage. Okay. And third attack is a 26 for 20 force damage. Okay. All right. Uh, wait, is a one of those was a 14 or no? They're all no. They all yeah. they were all advantage. So 29, 19, 26. Yeah, give me the grand total damage, if you don't mind. Uh, sure. That is. Let's see. 25. Uh, 45. 66. Bam. All right. How many rounds charged up is your are your wrappings at this point? It's at four, which I think is what we decided was going to be the cap, cap from now on. All right. It lets out a horrified shriek, and it, you almost one-rounded it. <laughs> well. <laughs> All right. And that's another, my turn. You just oh oh oh! You did the sixty-six, including the first twenty-five. Yes. Yes. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, okay, I was confused there. Okay. Yeah. Still, that's an incredible amount of damage for a single turn. Uh, yeah, Vapos taking advantage of that. What else? Right. And um, then because I hit the creature, I get an extra twenty feet of movement. So I'm going to move around to be over here. Getting ready for <laughs> my next round. Nice. Okay. Um, okay. They are going to continue their dance and spores will be released. I need everyone in the pit to make a constitution saving throw as they release their spores. Oops. Ignore my plus three. That's a 16. Forgot to uncheck uh, the thing. Nat 20 for Breath and a 23 for May Breath. Okay. Do those of us who... Do I count as being in the pit? Uh, you are in range, so you need to make a save also. That's a 12. All right, anyone who got under a 14, uh, you become poisoned. And you take five poison damage. 
you can make a new save at the end of each of your turns. The reason this is happening is because the spores are burrowing their way into your skin, and it's really terrible. Um, these guys are going to... Uh, uh, they're not going to provoke because they're going to uh, disengage um, and they're going to fly over here grab frogs and smash them and continue their dance as they continue their dancing the white speck of light grows becoming larger and more disturbing in appearance this guy flies up into the air and slams back down, summoning a third of the creatures. And he says, Now the dance of ruin can be completed. That brings us to Shadir's turn. Shadir is going to be like, I'm all alone. And he is going to dash... Well, he's going to fly over here, and he's going to cast an attack spell at this guy. He's going to throw some magic missiles at him, uh, dealing a solid 11 points of damage. That brings us to Maver's turn. Oh, sorry. I was I was hitting the wrong thing. Oh. Um, I'm assuming. I'm sorry. My computer's decided it just doesn't want to do anything. Um, the the one towards the south is the one Hippo's hit. Yes. Okay. I think it's in a better mood now. Uh, Mavra is going to fly her way over here and uh, start wailing on him. Okay. First hit is a 20 for 15 damage. Second hit is a 23 for 12 more damage. So a total of 27 damage. Those are both hits. Um... She slays it, and it vanishes in a cloud of screaming spores. Is the energy changed at all? It was growing, and its growth slows. Okay. Okay, that will, um... You know what, she's going to use the rest of her movement to... Let's see, she was... Actually, it, it, it was a little bit larger than it had grown last time, but then it slows back down to its normal. She's going to fly over here growth. with the rest of her movement, and that will end her turn. All right, she's standing up against the uh, ooze trickling rocks there, rock wall. Bella. All right, Bella's going to move forward. And she's going to shoot this guy. This guy? Okay. Oh, you saved my frog! Calls out the, uh, the frog talker. That's a 25 to hit for 10 damage. Okay, now you have an oath going. Yes, but not on him. So does that mean no benefit or also a penalty? I believe it just means no benefit. It's not disadvantage to attack anyone else? No. Okay. Uh, in that right, case, that you, take t you deal 10 points, solid. It lets out a squeak, but it holds on to the frog that it's squeezing. Uh, anything else, Bella? 
That's it. Ref's turn. Akiri on deck. Ref is stepping over here and non-recklessly, because flanking, attacking this uh, mm -hmm. screechy little friend. Oh my gosh. That's a 15 and a 13. Well, the 15 hits. Uh, 16 damage. Solid. Uh, I'm sorry, that will end my turn. Akiri, Vapos on deck. Akiri is going to hit... This one over here, the one over by Mayfair. Um, it's a with a sacred flame. Okay. Uh, yeah, it has to. Uh, it probably made it. Yeah, he made it. Oof. All right. You then move there, and that's it. It doesn't take any damage on a save? Nope. Okay, it's really sad. Yeah, it's a cantrip. Vapos. All right. Um, Vapos is going to step the wind again. Because um, this is a movement-intensive fight. And he is going to dash with his bonus action uh, to get up to... Uh, her to get up and in range of this guy. Um, basically going to be moving um, all the way up to here. Running up okay. the wall. So he can run up the wall straight up? Yep. Monks, yep. man. Monks. <laughs> People always bitch about them, but once you give them an item that lets them do good damage <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yep and then i'm attacking him three more times boom and um i'm burning through hit dice but i'm using the key straps one more time gotta get rid of this guy okay that is a natural oh, 20 <laughs> my gosh how much so, damage is that uh that is 39 damage. Oh my god. So you <laughs> uppercut the fiendish uh, <laughs> ape glowing eyed thing and crack off a tusk and it spurts black blood from behind the hole of it. Alright. This thing sways on its two clawed feet. <laughs> Awesome. Wings fluttering. Uh, oh, wait, shoot. I forgot my 1d8, which actually becomes 2d8 for that first attack. So what? that's actually another 13 damage on that first attack. Wait, it is? Are you sure? What's that? Are you sure? Yeah, it's, or it's the first attack each turn does an extra d8 of damage, and all damage dice are doubled on crits. How do you want to do this? Hell yeah! Um, honestly, just or or that same thing, just or uppercutting him, but instead or but instead of the or the tusk just cracking, or or cracking and falling off, it's or it or as it splinters, it goes through his eye. Oh, nasty! Uh, blood boiling pitch shoots out of the hole in its head. Is it? shrieks like a uh like a slaughtered pig and uh collapses in the mud at the edge of the of the uh of the cliff and then tumbles down as it dies the three beings it summoned disappear Pew! sent back to the nine hells from which they were summoned you have achieved victory over Tarag, son of Onisphorus, and he falls 
he falls. Congratulations. This orb of energy just goes and vanishes into nothing as the fiends summoning it are sucked back to their hellish planes of existence. Congratulations, guys. Well done, everybody. Ah, well, he died. you saved some of my frogs, and for that I am grateful, <laughs> says this lady. Would you like to come to my hut for some mud tea? Man, that would be delightful. Hmm, follow. Come on, chickadees. And she is going to uh, call forth more friends from within the cave uh, and basically get out of here. <laughs> That's amazing, guys. Um, she will take you uh, to an entirely different location. Her hut uh, in the swamp. Can you see that? Mm. Yep. Um, it's uh, actually there. There's an interior view. Um, It's comfortable enough inside. Um, and, uh, and mud tea turns out to be a kind of a swampy, chocolatey drink. There, you suspect that being a goblin shaman, she has put some mud in there, but it's not all mud. And uh, she says, I'm very glad to meet all of you. As you crowd into her hut. Some of you I've been waiting to meet for a very long time. Yeah, we got, we got a, little, a little sidetracked. Mm -hmm. You did, didn't you? Yes, it, it, it's, a, it's a pleasure to meet you as well. And um, I just wanted to say that um, another member of your um, order, I'm not, I'm not really sure, but uh, another, another goblin who spoke with frogs was able to help me with a very significant problem not too long ago. Um, she's sitting on the edge of her bed, her feet dangling a little, and she goes, Oh, yes. Was it uh, in Fuerwald? Yes, that was the place. The so, Goblin Town. Yes. Hmm. She was that extraordinarily helpful. That would have Removing a curse. And she sent you to me. Not directly, no. But when or when we met her, the other wanderers told me about you, and so I was interested to meet you. Uh, as anyone would be. She pets uh, one of the thousand and one frogs that litter uh, her home. Hmm. So, you helped me escape from that horrible fiend. The now Feshni. Now I'm going to tell you some things. I'll tell you and I'll help you because you saved my friends. 
We would be deeply, deeply thankful. Yes, you will be. I'm sure. Um, she says... She, uh... Uh, oh, by the way, I'm gonna assume you guys, um, loot the, uh, the fiend, uh, Terag, before you, uh, before you leave. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, if his, if his body doesn't, didn't disappear, yes. No, it did not. Um, all of the creatures he summoned did, but not he himself. Um, even as he does begin crumbling into, into ash, you are able to grab, um, a couple of, uh, black leather um, kind of bags that he has about his person. Um, but we'll we'll do that later because we're having a scene with um, the Mud Witch now with for the Frog Talker. In fact, she turns to her frogs and occasionally tells them what to do or seems to be listening to distant croaking sounds and then nodding to herself. Yes, as if they mean something to her. Um, she says, uh, she points at Shadir. You! He says, y y yes, ma'am. You have come to me, and I am going to teach you teach me? He looks at his sister. Aramis gives a little bit of a shrug. Like, sorry, uh, Kira gives a little bit of a shrug like, I don't know what's going on. She says, the frilled. She, she, her, she, she kind of bugs her eyes out like a frog. And as she begins to talk this next thing, the frilled, all the frogs inside the hut of all varying sizes from you know, the size of a of a of a of a marble to the size of a watermelon. Um, they all turn, and from their froggy throats emits this croaking prophecy: "The frilled shall be the masters of change in the battle that decides the wild fates. In one place and in another, the destruction shall be stopped by sister." And brother. Then they start, they go back to their normal froggy hopping business. And her eyes stop bugging out of her head. You see. You see? Well, Max. What? Uh, I think we skipped something. You said something and I didn't register. I didn't come to Are you fucking kidding me? No. The, the prophecy what was the last thing came, you guys heard? The prophecy came through. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I heard, heard the prophecy. Okay, and then she says something like she expects you guys to, like, just get it. Right? Like... Aha! So you see, Shadir, your brother, must stay here with me. And then, from afar, he can send you the strength to do what you need to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh! Oh! Be because you are brother and sister, like the frog said! Exactly. I always knew you were the smart one. Have some more mud tea. Thank you, it's quite delicious. It tastes of rich earth and chocolate. She says, the tracking frog that my mud witch put on 
he who kills on sight, shall tell me what plane of existence his power is hopping through. And then, with your brother's help, we can change the battle so that they will not escape you in your final conflict. Atop the tower, where the birds rule. And thus shall the prophecy be fulfilled! She lifts her little tattooed arms. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yes. Yes, we did. She said, Shadir says, Oh, I think I understand. Yes, yes. He, he, he says, but how will I talk to my sister? Oh, for that, a frog of talking from the frog talker. So she gives, uh, she gives Shadir a frog. Now, do you have a frog, Akiri? Uh, possibly, probably still. Mm-hmm. That little guy has been living on your person all this time. I know, the poor thing. He's been through so much shit. And she gives Shadir a matching frog. And for the first time, the frog hops up to your ear and whispers into it. I can send you messages. Shadir <clears throat> tries it. He whispers into his frog. Hello, sister, says the frog in your ear. Akiri giggles and turns to the frog next to her and whispers back, Hi. And the frog crawls up to his ear and whispers hi into his ear, in your voice. Shadir giggles because it does tickle. In a slimy but cute kind of way. Kind of like a small child licking your ear or kissing you. Um. Good, good. Here, have some more mud tea. And she, she pours you another cup of loam and chocolate. Uh, while she's pouring everyone another round, she says, "Yes, yes." It is time for the frill to deal with the threat from the skies and more. But then there's also you. And she points at Bella. What about me? And there's also him. And she points at your bow. He's in there, isn't he? Yes. I uh, would very much like to get their hands on him. Well, I've been doing everything I can to keep that from happening. You've been doing a uh, fine job, yes. Excellent job. But in the final fight, he will need to be released. But the only way to do that that I know of is to kill the dragon that trapped him there. Mm. Because of the curse. Yes, yes. That would kill the curse. But I know another way. Well, I, I mean, I'd do anything. She reaches into her goblin bosom and pulls out another frog. This frog 
is ghostly, pale blue. She pets its little head. This little friend. This little friend will help you. You see, we need the help. Of a creature that can eat curses. That sounds useful. Only you, Bella. Only you can talk to it that I know of. It is the dream snake of the third eye. Is that the creature that's been listening to me in my dreams? It is the favorite friend of the muse herself. Bring this little friend to the dream snake. And when the time is right, This little friend will help. And don't worry, those eaten in dreams are born again in the waking world. I shall see my little friend again. Yes, yes. She hands you the ghostly frog, which feels strangely cold in the palm of your hand. Only the dream snake of the Third eye can eat a curse so strong it holds the singer. Oh, yes. And the singer must be free. We are to save the wild lands we love. All right. I'll do it. Good. Keep him with you. And bring him into your dream. Once you find the snake of the third eye. Yes? I'll do my best. Good. Well, I have no doubt you will make a great successor to your father one day. Don't worry, he's all right. That's good to hear. Yes. The tracker frog tells me so. They need him alive and well, after all, if they are to remake our world. Bella's just going to get a little emotional and nod. Mapos is going to just put a reassuring hand on her shoulder. Rest now. Uh, you may have a third cup of mud tea if you wish. And, um, uh, don't mind if my little friends snuggle up to you. Rest sounds very nice. It's been a very long day. Sweet dreams. Oh, and you don't need a watch. You can trust my little friends. And with that, folks, we are going to end tonight's session. Uh, would you like to know what you got? before we end, or do you want to handle that later and just just finish up here? Uh, yeah, I'd like to know. All right. Uh, so in the black leather bags that you took from Terag's body before he disintegrated, 
You got uh, 207 stamped pieces of gold. 83 pieces of platinum. A bottle of honey. Uh, that on the label has a black bee stamped on it. There's something very disturbing about the bee as it is uh, feeding off of a skull. Uh, okay. There's a... Uh, in, in, a, in a sort of a pocket, you found a death's hand flower. Uh, which is a black petaled flower uh, whose veins and stem looks like a skeletal hand. Uh, there's a fine silk handkerchief with spots of blood staining it. Uh, there is a large dragon scale, reddish in hue. Uh, there is a pouch full of dried berries that seem oddly heavy um, and able to be crumbled up if you so wished. There's also a sealed pouch uh, that when you open it up seems to be full of diamond dust. Taladar is applauding in chat. It says, that was too much fun. I'm so glad uh, it was enjoyable, Taladar. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out and keeping it alive in chat. I really appreci appreciate you, man. Uh, and for subscribing. Uh, you're awesome. Uh, thank you to anyone who watched this. And thank you to anyone who watches this later. You are super cool. And uh, I'm so glad you enjoyed. Thank you to Jeremy, player of Breath the Barbarian. Thank you to M, player of Akiri the Cleric. Thank you to Kate or Kirsten, player of Bella the Bard. Thank you to Corey, player of Vapos the Monk. And a big thank you to Danielle, player of Mayra, who always has to leave early. Guys, that was a blast. I had a ton of fun. And uh, until next time, we will not be playing uh, next week as it is going to be our daughter's birthday and we'll be uh, out of town to celebrate that. Um, but I'm very much looking forward to next session uh, when that happens down the line. All right, guys, without further ado, we have to let our friends on the East Coast get to bed. Good night. Thank you all. Good night, everyone. Good night, guys. Uh, you got a chunk of experience points too. We'll deal with that. We'll deal with that in Discord. All right. All right. Bye. Good night. Good night. <laughs>